会扫吗？<笑><笑>I had mentioned in the last video that it was hurt. Shut up! I had mentioned in the last video that the motor was hurt in this truck as I have already compression checked one of the cylinders. But what I want to do today is go ahead, pull all the glow plugs out. I almost said spark plugs. Pull all the glow plugs out of the motor and uh, compression check it. And just do all the cylinders just to see kind of what the health of the motor is. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on that. Pop the hood. Yeah, go pop the hood. Why? Now. This is what you doing, right? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> That's going in the video. Don't give a f You gotta go in the cab and pop it, man. Come on. <sighs> oh my god. Let's go, dude. Today. Freaking sykes. Open the hood now. All the way up, dumbass. Lean frame? What? Lean frame? Yeah. Dope. Dude, now my eyes all twitching like yours was. <laughs> <laughs> you fuck. You twitch. All right. So as you can see, this is the Duraclap or the Clap Max, whatever you want to call it, and uh, we're gonna start pulling the glow plugs out of it. Alright, so we got both inner fender wells out. Next, we are going to pull the intercooler pipes, um, both sides, and then once those are out, we will unplug the glow plug controller so that when we crank the motor over, it's not trying to fire any of the glow plugs. So for these glow plugs, the little rail on these LB7s that goes across this are held on with 8 millimeter nuts. I'm pretty sure it's the same all the way up to at least LMMs. Um, maybe even LMLs are the same, I can't recall off the top of my head. So there's four of them, we're going to pull them each off of every glow plug and uh, then we'll pull the glow plugs out. Alright, something I forgot to mention on the driver's side is you need to undo the steering rod whatever you want to call it um, it's just a 15 millimeter bolt and it's just in between this half shaft so you'll take that out and you can lower this down out of the way to get access to your cylinder number four glow plug otherwise you can't get the glow plug out because that rod is in your way and before you take that bolt out of the steering linkage what you will want to do is take your seat belt um, you're going to go through your steering wheel like this and then plug it back in you're just doing this to prevent the steering wheel from turning when it shouldn't and potentially ruining, ruining a $600 clock spring that's in the steering column. So, like I said, take your seat belt, go through the steering wheel somehow, and then click it back in or click it into the seat belt just so it'll hold it still. And just like that. Sorry you couldn't do it with one hand, but now the belt is going to hold your steering wheel from going anywhere. Now that you have your bolt out, you're going to come back under here. And uh, like I said, you'll pull this bolt out and then this shaft will just slide up. Kind of hard to see there. And then this lower shaft will just drop down out of your way and you can get to the cylinder four glow plug, just like that. 
All right, now that I have all eight glow plugs out, I'm going to go ahead and unplug the pigtails that go into the cylinder head uh, for the injectors. Now, this is different depending on what your truck you're working on. Uh, 01 to early 04s, there will be four connectors. You will need to unplug all of those. On the later trucks, 05 to present, you will need to unplug them at the injectors or pull a fuse or unplug the ficum, depending on what your truck. Um, it varies depending on that. So you'll have to figure out what to do for your, your truck. But on this one, it's just the four different pigtails that go into the cylinder head. So I'm gonna get that done, hook up the compression gauge, and start cranking this thing over. Now that I have all the injectors unplugged, it's time to break out your compression gauge. Uh, the current one that I'm using is a Snap-on EEPD501. Uh, this is just a general diesel compression tester set. So what we have in the box here is our gauge. Uh, it's important on these diesels that you have a gauge that goes up pretty high. This one goes up to 800. Uh, I'm hoping to see around the 350 to 400 range. Um, with this old of an engine, I'm going to expect around 350, 330 to 350 on all the cylinders. Next, you're going to need your adapter to go into the glow plug hole on a Duramax. The thread pitch is an M10 by 1.25. And a lot of people online sell adapters just like this. They look like a glow plug, thread in, and you can read your compression with it. So let's get started. So as you can see back there, I have threaded in the adapter and put the attachments that I need for my specific gauge on. Now I'm gonna crank it over and see what this cylinder reads. Now I've already diagnosed this one and this is the cylinder that is low on compression. So I'm expecting to see around 280 on this one. And once we get this one done, we will go on to the next. So as you can see, that cylinder is about 280 PSI, um, which is below average. Uh, I'm gonna go through and do all the others just so that we can make sure that this one is not contributing as much and that's why I'm having a bunch of issues with the truck currently. All right, so all eight cylinders are done being pressure checked. I went ahead and saved them on my computer. As you guys can see down here, number seven is my culprit. It is at 270 PSI, where the rest of them are right around 260, 250. Um, there's a couple oddballs, like number five is only at 340, and number eight's at 380. Uh, but these two back cylinders are the worst and the best. So yeah, motor needs to come out, but I swear I am going to put 400,000 on this motor before I pull it. I don't even care if there's a rod hanging out of the side of the block. This thing is going to 400,000. I need to put 9,000 more miles on it to do so. And once we hit 9,000 more miles on it, hit that 400K mark, this motor will be coming out and I'll be putting another motor in that I've already put together. Um, and it'll just be a pretty much stock motor again. Uh, I'm not trying to do anything crazy with it. The new motor. It just has fresh enough stuff in it, but it's all stock just like this one. Um, another thing is, I don't know if you guys have seen the last video or any videos that I've gone over any info on this. This truck makes 300 or 690 wheel horsepower. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that the motor is actually on its way out. It's been at this power level for about the last 80,000 miles. So yeah, Duramax bottom ends are really kind of a shit show or a a gamble at anything over about 650 700 horse at the tire so this thing being old mixed with you know really high horsepower on this thing it's no surprise that it's going out uh, another thing is the culprit that uh why it's why it's down on compression is either the rod on that cylinder is just a little bit shorter than the others because it you know had too much cylinder pressure and bent or it has cooked one of the valves on the head. Um, it's not because of rings. This thing has no blow-by, uh, or no more blow-by than it always has. It's always had a little bit of blow-by, but that cylinder has definitely gotten worse over like the past couple months. And like I said, it's either a shortened rod or a burnt valve. So yeah, I'm gonna get the thing put back together and me and Hayden are gonna get out of here. It's like 11.30 or almost midnight. And yeah, so I'm gonna get it put back together and that'll be the end of this.
Well, there you guys have it. We got the Duramax compression checked. Compression, compression checked. And uh, like I said, obviously a cylinder is hurt. We won't know why for another 9,000 miles till when we pull it out and see if it's got a shortened rod or a burnt valve or whatever. So yeah, that'll be the it end. That'll be it for this video. You got Hayden over here looking like a dip, taking the temperature of everything. All right, explain. Okay. <laughs> this guy is this such an idiot. Blown, right? So everything in this shop is about 60 degrees. The wall's 59.6. The ground is 57. This fucking water is 53.6. All right. This water's been sitting here for four to five days. Everybody in the YouTube comment section, let us know what your theory is of why the water is colder than everything else. The car is st almost 60 degrees. All right. Why? Well, don't oh. care. Look. I'm tired. I'm going home. I'm going to go get some degrees. sleep. So, yeah. The Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Degrees.